Welcome to Doing Our Bit and today we're going to be looking at electric heating. This is the last part in our journey to go fully electric and replace our now 11 year old gas combi boiler. You, you could be forgiven for thinking that the only solution is a heat pump. This is probably because the amount of attention it receives, both good and bad. And the government currently gives a grant of £5,000 towards installing one up to April 2025 and £6,000 in the case of a ground source version. However, this sole focus on one option, in my opinion, is a bit misleading and unhelpful as one size doesn't fit all. And for us, a heat pump, or rather an air to water heat pump, is not an option. Well, today I'm going to look at five options I've considered, and I've listed them here. This is where I'm starting from. You can see here our house plan. We have a two bedroom semi detached. And this is my current numbers, which I will use for all comparisons. I'm removing gas entirely, and, and therefore I've included the standing charge on the gas side of things. Just substitute your numbers throughout to see what switching looks for you. You'll see here my current octopus energy costs for gas and electricity, and our current usage of gas for heating and water, and also the CO2 emissions per year that the gas boiler produces. We, like many people, in the UK used to have a hot water tank which was taken out when the combi boiler was installed based on at the time sound logic however this no longer applies as you can see so we have the challenge of reinstalling one as part of this project the other challenge cost wise is the higher cost of electricity versus gas but as you can see in this table efficiency matters when it comes to the actual cost of each kilowatt of heat so firstly, infrared heating. The pluses are they look lovely, even being a picture on the wall, and they can free up wall space, as you can even place them on the ceiling. They're also very controllable to deliver heat just where it's needed. The downside is one kilowatt of energy delivers one kilowatt of heat, and at peak electricity prices. So my running cost estimate for just heating, no hot water, as you can see, was over 1645 per annum based on 34 pence. My estimate based on my current peak rate of 39 pence makes this over 2K. So for me, using this for the whole house is not viable. The Tapir boiler. This is an interesting option as it works like a battery in that you can use off-peak electricity plus excess solar to charge it while it provides heating and hot water from that stored heat. This is therefore significantly cheaper to run than infrared. Although it can provide hot water to a new tank, the total capacity of 40 kilowatts could be tight on colder days, so I am including immersion overnight heating on top here. There is a combi version in development which hopefully will have a larger capacity but the issue which makes this option not available for us is its size and the fact it must be indoors. You need a space similar to that taken up by a washing machine with clear space around it as, you, as seen in these photos which we just do not have. But if you do have the space this is a serious option particularly if you already have an off-peak tariff with your EV. Number three, electric boilers. There are an, a surprising number of options in this space, including alternatives to the Tepio, and ones that have inbuilt water storage, as well as direct combi replacements. However, because in the main they will be using peak electricity, like infrared, they are not a cost-effective option for us. Number four, heat pump air to water. Don't discount the heat pump option as it could work for you. We have had two surveys both of which have concluded a heat pump air to water wasn't a good fit for us due to two factors. Firstly because of its size and the only place it could be sited in our property outside the conservatory in the back garden is not ideal. Secondly and more importantly this means the pipe work run via the garage was longer than ideal to achieving a high scope i.e. high efficiency, and makes the install expensive. You need a scope of at least 2.8 to get the £5,000 grant. Only one of our radiators would have needed to be replaced, the bathroom, 
but pipework size and radiator size are important factors with heat pumps. If a heat pump is an option for you, check out HeatGeek on YouTube for some really in-depth information on what is needed to make your install successful, like a low flow temperature. The design and setup is absolutely crucial to a successful install and it is the reason why you hear horror stories regarding heat pumps sometimes in the media rather than problems with the actual technology itself. Number five, air conditioning. When I was in business setting up shops, the first thing we got sorted was air conditioning and I've known for some time it provides good cost-effective heating performance as well as cooling, which most people associate with the name. The reason is it's another heat pump with a scope above 3.5, but this time referred to as an air-to-air -air rather than air-to-water type. Consequently, it does not use your current radiators and you again need a water tank to provide hot water. It's a major change, yes, but I like the idea of removing all our radiators, freeing up wall space, as the air conditioning units can be mounted near the ceiling. Given the hot temperatures we have had during 2022 in the UK, the ability to cool the house too is very attractive benefit, particularly if you have solar like we do, so you can use the excess export in the summer months to provide the power. We will have five indoor units, so we will need an electric heater towel rail for the bathroom. This is an option we will be going with, and in future I will look at this in more detail and show the install process, etc. As always, I'd be really interested in your personal experience of this. Anyone that's been running one of these systems for over a year and has some data to be able to share with others, that would be really helpful. And as always, if I've made a mistake or um, pointed out something that's not correct, please um, mention that in the comments as well so that others, others will know. I hope you found this video helpful and if so, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.